We're here to have an open, honest, and courageous conversation with you, especially to our students, so that you're well aware of what is happening. That important conversation was just the first of many, and as government prepares to host more of these talks, we look back at what happened in Clarendon. Hi there, Theodore Henry here. You are, of course, watching Jamaica Magazine. Good choice. Another good choice, staying put as we take the shortest of breaks and return with all this weekending show has to offer. See you after the break. I said, be careful what you're teaching little children. Make sure I have something to hurt them. Parents, keep your children safe and protected. Stay alert and be aware of where your children are at all times. Submit the latest photo of your child to his or her school. Know what's happening with your child. Listen to them when they say they don't feel comfortable going to a certain place or being around certain persons. Act quickly when your child tells you he or she has been touched inappropriately or approached with unwanted requests. Be the change. Help us protect our children. For more information, call 1-888-776-8328 or 1-876-878-2882. In a little while, we travel with Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller to Belgium. But right now, Kerry Ann Smith has your news of the day. Good day, I'm Kerry Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Friday, June 19. Cabinet has instructed the Chief Parliamentary Council to draft amendments to the Customs Act. The proposed amendments will increase the collection of customs duties and strengthen the enforcement powers of the Commissioner. It will also support the new automated system for customs data. The amendments will also provide a framework for fast movement of goods through the ports in anticipation of a logistics centered Jamaican economy. The Information Minister says Cabinet has also approved instructions for a bill to make payment and collection of the Conk levy, payable under the Conk Export Levy Act. The proposed legislation will allow for the payment of the levy within three months of the submission of an application for export certificate and the export license for each consignment of Conk. It will also make provisions for the levy to be paid in installments. Cabinet has also approved the revision of the national HIV policy. Speaking at this week's Jamaica House media briefing in Montego Bay, Senator Sandra Faulkner said the revision would shape the management and coordination of the national HIV response. The goal is to increase the national effort to halt and reverse the spread of HIV. The HIV policy revision will provide an enhanced framework direction and guidelines for interventions to persons infected with and affected by HIV. Jamaicans are again being urged to embrace voluntary non-paid blood donation to help the health sector meet the demand for the precious substance. The latest appeal came from Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Marion bullock Ducasse. She was representing Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson at a function to celebrate World Blood Donor Day on June 14. If persons have ready access to the most improved facilities with equipment that has the most updated technology, and the most skillful medical practitioners, but do not have the requisite blood supply, whether for their surgery, their treatment as a cancer patient, for chronic anemia or for bleeding disorder, the improvements will mean very little to them. An adequate supply of blood comes not from a budgetary allowance, but can only be ensured through regular donations by voluntary, unpaid blood donors. Earlier this year, the blood bank got a mobile unit to make donations more accessible. Government has signed a $69 million contract with YP Seton and Associates to build the Helsha Bridge in Portmore, St. Catherine. The work is to begin by the end of June and last for six months. Despite we are giving the contractor six months, we are hoping that they will finish before six months, that we can have easy access to the resident of the community across there. The bridge is the only link to the community of Helcher. It was closed last year due to structural weaknesses and a detour road created to facilitate access. Minister Azan says the Works Ministry will also be signing a contract soon for the Forum Bridge in the Portmore Municipality. 
Students who were absent from this year's Grade 6 Achievement Test and have reached the maximum age to transition from primary school will be placed in appropriate institutions. Children over the age of 13 cannot remain in primary school. The Education Ministry says a list of the 1,087 absent students will be sent to the regional offices for their appropriate follow-ups and placements. We look at the students' continuous assessment scores, grade 4, grade 5 and grade 6. We also look at the primary schools that they are coming from and where they actually live. And we use this information, of course in collaboration with the parents, to ensure that they are placed appropriately. And finally, a new board has been named for the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission BGLC. Gary Peart will continue chairing the board, while Linton Walters will serve as vice chairman. The other members are Peter Reed, Jeffrey Mordecai, Major Vincent Dave Anderson and Monique Harrison Beckford. The new board will serve from June 1 to May 30, 2018. Cabinet has also approved a new board for the Heart Trust NTA. Chaired by Dr. Moses Peart, the 20-member board will serve from July 1 to May 2018. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Thanks for watching. Chikungunya is a viral infection transmitted when an Aedes aegypti mosquito bites an infected person and then bites someone else. Symptoms include high fever, headache, joint pain, muscle pain, and rash. If you suspect that you've been infected, take paracetamol such as Panadol, Cetamol, and Tylenol. Infants, children under five years old, pregnant women, the elderly, persons with sickle cell, and chronic illnesses such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease are at risk for more severe symptoms and must see a doctor for proper evaluation and monitoring. Fortunately, most cases of Chick V are mild, but if your symptoms worsen, you need to see a doctor. For more info, call 1-888-1LOVE from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That number again, 1-888-663-5683. Did we promise you to travel with Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller? Well, let's delay no more. CELAC, the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, 33 countries in all. EU, the European Union, 28 countries in all. Both groupings met in Brussels, Belgium in June to discuss a myriad of mutual issues. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller led Jamaica's delegation to the crucial talks which yielded some good results for the country and the regions. On June 10 and 11, CELAC engaged its leading foreign investor and the second largest trading partner in two plenary sessions. They focused on ways to reinvigorate by regional partnership and cooperation and explored ways to address the different challenges facing the EU CELAC grouping. Among the more pressing, the post-2015 development agenda, security, drug trafficking and climate change. Coming out of those discussions, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller and her CELAC counterparts signed a joint agreement with the EU for increased cooperation. Areas covered under the agreement include migration, the fight against illicit drugs, poverty reduction and a restatement of support for the partnership. The EU signaled its support by announcing that it would provide more than 800 million euros to fund programs and strategic investment projects. The money will also be used to fund sustainable development, capacity building and to build a fiber optic cable to connect the EU and Latin America. At a closed door retreat, Prime Minister Simpson Miller highlighted some of Jamaica's challenges. Among them, the island's designation as a middle-income country, which blocks Jamaica from accessing greater levels of funding for development and economic support. At the retreat, the Prime Minister also pressed for practical, on-the-ground programs to tackle climate change. Mrs. Simpson-Miller also spoke on the need for increased development funding in line with the post-2015 development agenda. The EU CELAC summit also served as an opportunity for Prime Minister Simpson Miller to engage in talks with the CARIFORUM group of countries and the EU. She also convened bilateral talks with her Spanish counterpart. Those talks centered on technology transfer, agriculture and agro-processing. 
bilateral discussions with Sweden's Prime Minister focused on trade and investment, child care and protection, employment creation, social protection and gender equality. At the end of the summit, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller left Belgium assured that the European Union would continue its 40-year-long support of the island's development agenda. She was also satisfied that the CELAC and CARIFORUM groupings were even stronger in their resolve to address the issues facing the peoples of the region. Fiscal Consolidation The centerpiece of the program has been the need to reduce our debt. Business Reform Make sure that we transform Jamaica to make it a place to do business easily. New and existing businesses will benefit from streamlined regulations and processes. And pursuing strategic investments while protecting the most vulnerable. The path we're on is the right path. The economy in Jamaica is turning. The fact that the international community is once again lending to Jamaica says something about their confidence in our policies. It is now time to actually stay the course, not to lose the benefits of the hard decisions that have been made. The Jamaican government is committed to continuing the process of reform. The government of Jamaica is on a mission, going for growth, staying the course and transforming the economy through its economic reform program. It's a Friday, and you know we don't like to give you bad news as you get ready to kickstart your weekend. So we won't. Well, not entirely. Fair warning. This next feature does not shy away from talking about the violence and other issues affecting Jamaica's children. But you know what? The conversation is part of the solution. And the good news is, government's not prepared to sit idly and watch our children be abused. Take a look. The Prime Minister in her wisdom asked for a number of town hall meetings, particularly in areas where we saw that the data relating to child abuse was at a spike. Using the data to direct their focus, the Youth and Culture Ministry zeroed in on Frankfield Clarendon for the first in a series of town hall meetings on children's issues. At the Edwin Allen High School, government connected with parents, teachers, students, and the community at large. We're here to have an open, honest, and courageous conversation with you, especially to our students, so that you're well aware of what is happening. Listen to the voices, cry to be free. Can we be the promise that we promise to be? Driving rain did not douse the interest of Frankfield residents who came out in their numbers to engage in constructive dialogue for the protection of the nation's children. They were updated on what government is already doing, which includes a budget of $89 billion being spent across eight ministries for children and youth programs and projects. We are committed to putting the resources not only to development of our young people and children, but also to protection. And that protection depends largely on what's happening in communities across the island. Children are suffering because of the violence that is taking place here in Frankfield. The protection of our children starts from home. Parents cannot allow the children to be in charge. You can have a child who is 11 year old or on the road until 11, 12 o'clock in the night. And parents is in bed. I believe that all of us, every single one of us, political leaders, church leaders, students, media, the security force, all of us have to get together to protect our children. We don't find communities degenerate overnight. They start tolerating certain things and gradually more and more dysfunctional behavior creeping. You have to draw the line. You have to have a zero tolerance. If you don't care about the adults, I beg you, for the children's sake, every community where there are illegal guns, your children end up paying the price. Is 
Beyond the bigger issues that put children at risk, the community learned that government had made it easier to report child abuse. The police, the Office of the Children's Registry, the Child Development Agency, and the Office of the Children's Advocate are all able to receive reports. The gathering also got an update on how the courts would be dealing with child abuse cases, the plan to give longer sentences and hit child abusers with bigger fines. If the crime is one that carries a, a maximum sentence of 10 years or more, it will allow an additional 10 years to be added if the victim is a child. If the crime is one that is, carries a maximum sentence of less than 10, 10 years, then the court can increase it by 50% over what it would otherwise have been. Similarly, if there's a fine involved, the fine can be increased by up to 50%. On the matter of parental abuse and neglect, Justice Minister Mark Golding said in addition to the fines and sentences, the courts would be targeting parents with mandatory parenting classes. Meanwhile, child abuse cases that go before the courts are to be given priority and heard quickly. Once the floor was open for questions, community members, parents and students took the opportunity to get answers. How do you go about speaking out for someone in the sense that you can indeed make reports saying that yes, something has happened to this person. However, when this person is being asked what is going on, they deny the allegations in an effort to shield their parents or whoever is given the abuse. Let me assure you that there are experts in the field who are specially trained, they have training in psychology, in social work, they're very experienced and discreet. Your question reflects what is at the heart of a lot of the investigations that we do. Because what we're seeing is that the people who abuse children are really people who know them. But the key is, as a student particularly who may be faced with this kind of issue in your school, to encourage them to talk to even one person. So the system may be slow, but it can be sure if we have cooperation from persons. I am concerned that coming out of the legislation, what programs are we actually going to be seeing put in place? I am suggesting that the sanctions, so to speak, that are put in place, that should be something that is requisite right across the board something that we could probably implement through schools where there are seminars that are held at schools right across the island to improve the parenting skills. We're setting up parenting places in schools. We started with primary schools. We have about 120, 130 of those um, places in primary schools. And the intention is for us to give parents uh, workshops and seminars about parenting, knowing what they should do, what they shouldn't do, what the rights of the children are, what their rights are as parents, where they can go for help, and so on and so forth. Mrs. Foster Allen also revealed that through the National Education Inspectorate, students get a chance to give their opinions on what's happening in their schools, which can include reports of abuse. Some 90,000 responses have been collected and are now being reviewed. Please say something, whether you do it in writing, anonymously or you find somebody you can confide in or you make a phone call but do it be empowered recently i read a release from the minister of from the ministry of education stating that to lock out a child for lateness and dress code is against international human rights laws, etc. How do you deal with that child inside? We perhaps need to think more creatively. How about finding some way to affect that child in such a way that the offensive behavior will not be repeated? If you lock the child out and the child happens to find some man's house to go to on school time, because there is nobody at home to receive the child after you've locked the child out. You have done two things. You have exposed the child to the possibility of harm coming to her, and you have also denied the child the right to his or her education. So when you deny education, it doesn't solve a problem, it creates a problem. We're really happy that the, minist the ministry took time out to come and to have 
town hall meetings and we do hope that they will all be successful and that persons will uh, heed to the cries that will be going on. The conversations have begun, paving the way for a better understanding of the role we all play in the care and protection of our children. More community meetings are to come, but while you wait for those opportunities, be a good citizen. Report any known or suspected case of child abuse. Call the police, the Office of the Children's Registry, or the Child Development Agency. You hold the key to a safer and more secure Jamaica for our youth. Use it. Your silence worth the life of a child? Report child abuse. Call the Office of the Children's Registry at 1-888-PROTECT. Be the change. Speak out. Protect our children. Let's lighten the mood. Summer right around the corner and coming on strong. So what's your plan for the little ones? Well, you know us, we have suggestions. You're welcome. Hey, Ira. You decide what you're going to do for the summer? And please don't tell me you want to go visit your cousin overseas because I don't have no money right now. No worries, self, mommy. Mugo Planet has several options right here in Jamaica. You want to see? Oh, okay, sure. Show me. Today my rise like the sunrise, my bright and my upright. No one can break my vibes. I may not care who I fight, I know I criticize. I'm on a higher heights. If you're looking for an arts-based summer program, look no further than the Institute of Jamaica's Junior Center. It is a visual and performing arts program, and included in that are activities that will not just develop the skills in the youngsters in terms of visual and performing arts, but certainly the entire person. There are programs to deal with life skills, activities that deal with life skills, mental wellness. So some of the activities are like the regular speech and drama, art and craft, music, dancing, paper making. There is what we call kitchen fixing, which is an, um, culinary skills. So they learn to prepare some Jamaican dishes. And, you know, just exciting, fun. It's summer, so it is fun, fun, fun. So if you're between the ages of 6 and 18 years old and interested in the arts, mixed with life skills such as conflict resolution and teamwork, then be sure to sign up for the IOJ's Junior Center Summer Program. If you have three or more children attending the summer program, you'll pay a discounted rate. The centre has two locations, East Street in Kingston and Greater Portmore in St. Catherine. They can be reached at 922-062026 in Kingston or 989-7509 in Greater Portmore. We encourage parents to kickstart their summer fun for their children at the public library nearest you, where children can enjoy a fun-filled summer experience in a safe and comfortable caring environment where learning and fun are intertwined as a holistic experience for their children. You've got that right. The Jamaica Library Service has been providing six to 14 year olds with opportunities to learn Spanish, sign language, get computer training, and become better readers. After all, it's a library summer camp. We will be featuring art and craft programs, music, dance, drama, and a host of other activities. And guess what? The summer program is free of cost. So? We encourage members of the library and members of the public to visit the library nearest to them, where they will get additional information on the summer program. 
If your child is more into sport, then the YMCA should be your choice. Five to 14 year olds can get involved in swimming, karate, badminton, and other sporting activities. And get this. Our summer program, it runs for eight weeks and we start at 9 to 4.30. Parents get until 6.30 for pickup to make it more convenient for them. What's more? We have dance, we have drama, we have a speech, and we have music in terms of singing. We're also having field trips to various interesting places such as Castleton Gardens as well, and we will also be having computer classes. We have games, sing-along, excursions, we have um, speakers coming in to talk on different topics such as um, road safety. The art and craft for the kids, it is geared towards having them learn about art skills, craft skills, which they wouldn't normally get in school. Although the YMCA summer camp caters to 5 to 14 year olds, if you're over the age, there's still a place for you at the Y. We do invite volunteers to come and work with us. If you want a work experience and a fabulous summer, great experience, you can come along. You should send your children, they will learn a lot and they will learn to volunteer and give up themselves. For further information on the YMCA's summer camp, call 754-9034. Interesting. I wonder if we can find anything for your brother. If none of the arts, sports, or culture-based programs is to your liking, how about a work and play experience in media and communication? The MTI summer, summer Camp Just for Teens is back this year. It's for teenagers 13 to 18 years. And we concentrate on voice and TV production. So for four weeks, Teenagers will be introduced to the tenets of voice and speech, you know, how to present in class, how to speak well, how to pronounce your words, and also for the production side, you get to how learn how to light a set, how to write scripts, and how to use the camera. It's a four-week program, so be sure to call the Media Technology Institute at 922-9214, extension 242. Wow, Taira, you know, all of these things they're showing me, they're interesting, but bigger question is which one you're going to choose? Mm. Oh, it's my day to do anything I want to. It's my time, and I'll use it any way I want to. Jamaica Magazine is playing on our website. The address is jis.gov.jm. Our features are streaming on YouTube. The link is below. We read your emails, so send more at the link that's also below. And tweet us or friend us. Either is fine. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for making it Jamaica Magazine. Another one is on tomorrow. Till then, be cool. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.